Mm. Uh, Morena, Morena Jackie, how are you today? Morena, I'm good, thank you. Tia. Awesome. Thank you very much for um, joining us here on The Organizer. It's really great to, to have you and to have someone uh, with the experience like you do uh, in the field of events, especially, um, I guess, live music events and stuff. So, um, and obviously, as things have changed in this world of COVID, here in Aotearoa with the changing of sort of mandates and all the rest of it, things are starting to pick up a little bit of momentum. I can see that kind of happening there. But um, so it'd be really, it's really cool to be able to talk to you today about what that looks like for Jackman Entertainment. Um, so yeah, just a little bit about yourself, Jackie. I obviously know a, a lot about you, but for some of our audience and stuff. Yeah, no, um, I call Jackie Sanders, Taka um, Northern, Northern Ireland, aho, and no by Fairangi Yaho, um, and um, I am a festival promoter. I have a company called Jackman Entertainment, and uh, we've been operating since two thousand and eight. Uh, and yeah, so we mainly do um, music, music festivals. We've worked on music festivals. We've created music festivals um, all over New Zealand and and Australia, and. Also, I'm the, the promoter for UB40 featuring Ali Campbell. So whenever um, those boys have come down here over the last kind of, oh, it's over a decade now, um, I work with them. And so, yeah, at the moment, we, we've lost a few um, tours um, over the last couple of years. And sadly, we lost Astro as well in November last year. Um, but, yeah, we are looking... Um, to the future now and we've got um, Ali Campbell coming back and um, we're doing some shows in Australia in October and um, back into New Zealand as well um, next year so so yeah so so quite a bit happening still in the music space mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah and looking looking at lots of other things that we're doing which um, the whole climate and, and the the situation around COVID did change the way we we operate and um, the type of events that we do and it's um although very scary and worrying to start with it's actually really exciting now yeah it is really exciting and again um obviously this time um to be able to think about what uh, creatively uh, i've talked to uh, some people here in to do it and they've just these things these ideas have started to mount but now it's coming to a time to the ability to now be able to execute because we have been in this kind of lull for a long period of time. Um, so, so tell me in relations to these things that you're planning ahead. Uh, I guess what do you foresee, or have you uh, noticed any challenges, and in particular with suppliers or access to resources? Thinking about these events coming up. Well, it's it's kind of twofold. There's there's a yin and a yang there. So there's definitely um, been a lot more opportunities that have come through. Um, you know, sort of with some of the funding that that was made available for for the creative industries to to keep going and survive, and um, you know, so it made a lot of us kind of like re re look at what we can do. I mean, a, a company such as mine that would probably mainly focus on international artists mm -hmm. and and bringing you know sort of a couple of those in a year. You know, so we've had two years, it'll, you know, sort of two and a half years without. Any ability to bring in international so we were looking definitely more towards our kiwi artists who we we always work with a lot as well but just looking a bit wider at, at different things so so the funding and um, there through regional events funds and and um and other um funding opportunities has given us a really cool opportunity to to actually put a few new things together awesome. and to to really kind of like um work collaboratively with mm. with a much wider um you know sort of section of the community and so so the positive is definitely you know sort of like the excitement of collaborating on on large events we're putting something together at the moment and we did we started uh, Matariki Paifairangi last year um in Northland and we um well into planning for for 2022 with the new um, the new public holiday, uh, but that that scene that a lot of people coming together, iwi, other event organisers, um, venues, suppliers, community groups, business associations. So 
those are the kinds of things that we would not be not have been doing before uh, COVID. And that was yeah, that was kind of one of my questions. Do you think that that may not have been that these opportunities have been created by COVID that you're able to collaborate a little bit more and funding available funding? Yep. So you know, sort of, and the funding, you know, sort of, I mean, although it's it's, you know, sort of for our region, it's not huge, but but we are making it work, and yeah. Definitely, the, these collaborations would not have been happening unless we'd all been put been put into a situation. Well, how can we do this? And you've got to remember that Northland um, has had it pretty hard. Like Auckland, um, you know, sort of had a very long lockdown. That this last year, I mean, we we haven't had an event up here since Matariki last year in mm. July. Mm -hmm. We we were left in red over over that Christmas New Year period and um, we got three days of orange and and then back into red again so mm -hmm. it nothing really has happened and the big knock-on to go back to your previous question about the suppliers huge impact huge impact I mean the, there's we're definitely losing some of the key companies and um, I know one of our toilet suppliers is is struggling production guys I know have have had to to go and Get other jobs or mm. go on um on uh, uh benefit mm. uh, so we we were struggling anyway up here mm. with with access to resources and so i think that's taken a really big hit so probably you know sort of you know we're going to have to use a lot more auckland suppliers in the short term but mm. really want to look at how we build capability and, and bring up you know, sort of bring those those suppliers back and support them. It's um, you know, so the other big thing is, you know, sort of the impact on freight. And this isn't just COVID. I know that the current situation in Ukraine has has affected fuel prices. And I had a quote um this week for um freight for a marquee. And normally I'd you know, sort of, it's expensive anyway to get them up here. So usually about be around the two, three thousand dollar mark, it was six thousand dollars. Wow! And yeah, so wow. It, mm. That's just for the marquees, and now mm. if we don't have the generators. We don't have enough toilets for major events. We don't have, um, you know, enough fencing. So you know, so like, so having to to bring all those elements up. And add on that freight cost is huge, mm. and and even just bringing in, uh, like if we're getting merchandise or, or anything that has to come in from overseas, the costs are, are hugely increasing. Mm. So that yeah, is have an impact. Definitely, and I guess you'll see your bottom lines change, and obviously those costs need to be offset through ticket sales and all the rest of it and stuff. So we all kind of paying for it. So I guess really it's just being able to support local where possible so that they can continue to to, to have work, they can continue to have these resources. But yeah, it's a, at the moment, obviously, it's just rebuilding. And like you mentioned, it's about um, rebuilding the capability um, is probably the kind of the first step and stuff. So um, yeah, you talked before about international artists and stuff. Do you see, I mean, there's an appetite. I see there's lots of sort of things and international artists are kind of there. Do you see there being a saturation in the market? And, and do you also, has there been some challenges or is it different how you're communicating with artists overseas in relation to contracts and stuff and COVID and all that? Well, um, we all had introduced COVID clauses. So to mm. try and protect ourselves, I bet there's, there's starting to be a little bit of a backlash against that. Um, they're still within my contracts, but mm. I, I do think that a lot of these artists, as the rest of the world opens up, they don't want to be risking coming to to New Zealand or Australia, and and having you know sort of that COVID clause where they they um, don't get their guaranteed fee mm. because of the restrictions or a lockdown that might happen here when they know that if they could go somewhere else where those restrictions aren't as likely, so. So yes, the, there's a little bit of that, a little bit of pushback. Um, I, I guess you know, sort of a little bit of an increase in costs as people are worried about the cost of air travel. Um, it's not looking hugely more expensive at the moment. I, but you know, that may change. It's still early days yet, so, mm -hmm. so yeah, mm -hmm. it'd be interesting to see how it goes. Um, mm -hmm. um, I have found. Um, 
some internationals wanting more and um, like higher sums now i guess if they're looking at the couple of years of lost income and and mm -hmm. they're trying to recoup but like you say all our costs are increasing and mm -hmm. um, you know sort of it's and and can we put ticket prices up mm, yeah know, what what's going to be the impact you know if people mm. have lost jobs or if their income has been impacted um i mean i know for our region we're quite um you know there's certain sectors that are doing brilliantly um mm. you know sort of but definitely tourism has been um quite largely affected um and if you think of about the amount of tourism operations and accommodation providers and restaurants and and all mm. the families that they support there's a lot of income on people's income uh, effect on people's income so mm. so you know whereas we've got oh well, we'll just put our prices from 99 dollars a ticket to 110 dollars a ticket but mm. just putting it out of people's reach and mm. will mm. and then like you say with this huge influx of of um artists wanting to come in or, or all us promoters are going right mm. let's get everybody in that that tour that was cancelled that tour that was cancelled you know rescheduling it into the coming 12 mm. to 18 months are we going to have this huge big saturation in the market and then people mm. go well normally i would have gone to see such and such and that and that mm. but I, i'll only choose one or two of those yeah so, yeah. so we, yeah. we've got to really think about that as well yeah definitely Even and i guess now, yeah, whatever yeah. opportunities exist where you can not collaborate but just have those discussions so that you're not you know as promoters and stuff you're um um sharing those resources or sharing that, that which is beneficial for everybody um, um versus a competition style because i guess that's what was used to be what which is fine but yeah under the current we did kind of have to look at it differently and, and approach it a bit differently i imagine Definitely, there's and and again in in the music industry there are collaborations happening, and awesome. um, you know sort of and and I'm um, doing some joint ventures and and working with other promoters because we're like well we're just going to be um, corrupting each other's audiences mm. so so mm. let's combine there and let's make it uh, you know sort of a, a you know financially viable for ourselves but also a really good experience for the for the punters so mm, mm, yeah again, of course you, you did see quite a bit last you know sort of this summer of um you know sort of a lot of events were going in um i mean we couldn't do anything but could sit back and watch and how many similar events were going in in places around todonga and hawks bay and mm. um uh the nelson region there was a lot of very very similar competing events mm, and, mm. and you're thinking well that's not going to benefit anybody somebody's going to no. take it there. yeah 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 that's exactly right um so just to kind of um i guess wrap it up there's a lot to think about um in relation to sort of what's uh looking ahead just a kind of a general question for you if you were to organize your dream gig what would it be what would it look like if you were to, where, where finances, COVID wasn't an issue, what what would that look like? So, well, I can't bring back Bob Marley. Yeah. But, <laughs> that would be but, my dream. Let's be honest. Would be the dream. Yeah. Yeah. So, we, we tried to do that a bit with our Marley All Stars, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, it would. Um, it's interesting, you know. So we've lost um, quite a few people in the last couple of years as well and then um, I mean I, I've always been a huge fan of those multi-genre festivals mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. that I went to as a kid so um, you don't see as many of those in, mm -hmm. in Aotearoa so mm -hmm. it's usually yeah, like a reggae theme or a um, you know sort of or, or drum and bass and um, mm -hmm. yeah I, I really love you know sort of going to Reading and Glastonbury and and, and those mm. big festivals as a kid where you could kind of yeah we we've kind of yeah. lost that since Big Day Out went that yeah, used to right. be, mm. and mm. it's oh, great to do something like that to yeah. organise and to um mm. you know sort of, and to be a participant in and to to enjoy so but anything yeah. now around food I want great food you know so mm. I don't want mm. um you know chips and a burger we you know yeah. so we we've all moved yeah. past that now haven't mm. we we can you know, put in amazing food and um, mm. our rich culture 
So, yes, yeah, so things that are more experiences, I think. Yeah, 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 and exactly. I mean, in terms of events, you know, uh, as we know, go to lots of lo um, music, so lots of events. I, I love it from the experience. It's all about the experience, like you said, the food, the getting there, um, and then everything else is just a bonus. Um, but, yeah, I'd love to see something in terms of um, – Big day out or, or yeah, multi genre. I think is um, yeah, yeah, that's that's really really cool, Jack. So I look I look forward to that, Jackie, when you organise that. So yay, no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. But and again, I um, just want to thank you very much for um, just having a, a conversation with us. It's exciting to see and hear uh, what's looking ahead. Yes, there are some challenges um, uh, looking ahead, but I think I think one of the key things is just the uh, collaborative approach that you seem to be taking and stuff. And I think that will be um, what will work um, with either the community or with other promoters and stuff. So um, yeah, looking really forward to it. So again, um, uh, on behalf of the organizer, thank you very much for your um, for chat today. Thank you, Tia. Thank you, Jack. Talk to you. Talk to you soon. Thank you.